Hello Internet, welcome back to our tutorial playthrough. I see we have the bugged tiles up here where it's displaying the shopping cart even though it doesn't exist there anymore. This happens when you uh, move and your memory tile stores that the shopping cart existed there, but you're continually pulling it so every tile that you move, it's re saving basically at every every tile you pull past saying hey the shopping cart was here last time we saw it oh now it was here the last time we saw it now it was here and it doesn't erase it an easy way to fix this 99 percent of the time is to just walk to those tiles and it will restore uh, a new memory of that tile we were experiencing that further up where it wasn't uh clearing out i'm not sure why that was but for the most part, you can pretty easily fix that. It's just a graphical glitch that's mildly annoying. So I see that we have placed a bed here for our companion, which is nice. We have the shopping cart now. I don't know if we talked about this in too much detail. Again, you can just grab things with capital G uh, and haul them around, and it's basically just a basket for us to throw crap into so that we don't have to carry everything in our open inventory. Oh, that's right, we were mopping up blood. We could do a little bit of that while we talk uh, so I don't have a particular theme set up for this episode. I think we're going to go back out and explore for at least one more episode and then we will settle in for the night and when we settle in for the night we will talk about sleep and we will talk about uh, treating wounds overnight and the healing process in Cataclysm. But I think for this episode we are just going to uh, be exploring a little bit more just because it's the early game and you really do want to explore as much as possible. It's interesting that this is just a discolored spot that we can't clean. It's a little bit more blood. We'll get that out of here with the mop as well. So I think we're pretty clean in here, which is nice. You don't have to clean blood or anything like that. That is just for the aesthetics. That's not uh, necessary for, you know, you're not going to get diseases or anything like that. It's mostly just for funsies. Uh, to keep things just like when I hauled the bodies outside here it wasn't because we had to it was because uh, it just makes sense to me that we wouldn't keep corpses in our shelter so uh, and if we wanted to go a step further we could burn them let's uh, clear out these shopping cart tiles while we move up here so we know that this area is relatively clear right here so I think I feel safe moving into this house uh, these houses here um, we did see some monster density behind those houses at the prison, but they're going to continue migrating towards those sounds, so they should stick pretty close to the wall of the prison, and I think we'll be able to slip in the front doors pretty easily. Again, it's nighttime, so we're just going to move a little bit cautiously, uh, and we don't need to be super afraid. Oh, that's right, we set off a car alarm, which we're hearing. So we actually do need to be pretty careful because there is a horde of enemies up here. Um, what will happen... So we know that that was a pretty good vehicle when we looked at it last. Uh, let me adjust my mic, hopefully not loud. Uh, when we looked at it last, we knew that it was mostly intact so we could at least salvage parts from it if we needed to. Probably going to get tore up by the zombies uh, that hear that and come over to smash. Zombies really like to smash running vehicles. Any vehicle that's making sound, they will break it to pieces. So I'm expecting when we get up there with that horde, there's probably not going to be a lot left of the vehicle. A lot of it's going to be damaged. We can clear out those hordes uh, that came up there. The problem is doing it at night is extremely dangerous. Cell phone, don't be a jerk. Uh, it's extremely dangerous because we can't see the entirety of the horde. So we really don't know how many there are or, or where they're going to be. So what we would do is come back up here during the daylight hours, probably about where we're standing now, and we would be able to see the outskirts of that horde. And we would do what we did with the, the group over here, which is just to move so that they can see us back up, let one or two come over at a time, kill them rest to get our stamina back, go back up, let some more see us, and backtrack. That really is how I clear out 90% of locations, is just by gradually pulling one or two or three at a time, um, and then, then just managing from there. So it's definitely possible, it's definitely something we'll look into tomorrow, um, but for the remainder of this night, we're just going to loot. Again, while we have the cover of darkness, 
we're pretty insulated from the huge groups of zombies. All we need to really worry about... I don't know how much we talked about it in our last episode, but all we really need to worry about when we travel... Like, we traveled up to the, the hardware store, which was a huge, just complete waste of time. There was really nothing of value in there. But when we moved up there, what we started to notice was we moved over. We didn't see anything. I don't think we encountered a single zombie. Got to the hardware store, cleared the hardware store and the grocery store, and on the way back we started to see five, six zombies. And what happens is that as we travel, we're leaving behind a scent trail and we're making a little bit of noise. And what that does is it has other enemies, you know, that may be here, they'll get a whiff of us, essentially. Or they'll hear us moving, so they'll be like, Oh, I heard something. So they'll move over, then they'll catch wind of our scent trail and they'll start to track over towards us. Usually one pass through is not a super strong scent. So they usually don't follow us all the way, you know, to wherever we go. But what happens is that they get caught in that scent trail and they just kind of linger in that area. So even though it was safe on the way out, on the way back, we, we will encounter those. It's kind of like the wake behind a boat. They will congregate in that area that you travel through. So, usually not a huge issue. Usually it's only a few zombies that actually make it over there. Uh, and then it depends on the zombies as well. We talked a little bit about, man, I really would like a crowbar. I'm getting really tired. We dropped our lockpicks. Of course we did. Getting really tired of not being able to pry doors open. Let's just loot everything. Take some cat food. Uh, we really don't need more mustard. We have quite a bit of mustard at this point. Seasoning is usually always valuable because it never goes bad we'll pick up the veggies we're seeing here we have a lot of perishable food back at base so i'm really not worried about food there appears to be a hole here below flat roof pile of rubble no support so it looks like the floor underneath has collapsed it's possible that there are enemies down there it's possible that there were um, the survivor zombies and whatnot actually smashed the floor out. And it's not actually an issue with the downstairs. It may just be this floor. And back here we have a garden that looks to have some plants in it. We would like to go back there and harvest those. But again, we saw the enemies over here. You can see the broken out fences where they've smashed things. So we kind of think there's at least another survivor and there was a tough zombie, I believe, in this area so we really don't want to go out back necessarily can we get eyes on this at least just to see what the plants are uh dirt floor planter with seedling rose so they're roses roses are not very valuable um I, you know i don't know what you get in cataclysm i assume it's rose hips that you would get and then brew into tea it's a pretty classic uh herbal remedy that people use all over the world so uh, rose hip tea is definitely a thing. I think doesn't it? Okay, maybe a little gross for you, but doesn't rose hip tea like increase your chances of diarrhea? Oh, they've migrated into the basement. That's really interesting. Usually zombies don't head up or downstairs. Um, they've all seen me. You hear a terrible shriek. So there's also a shrieker down here. Tough zombie, survivor zombie, regular zombie. So we're gonna leave. And probably at least one is going to come up the stairs. No. So, I can't... Let's peek back down the stairs real quick. There's a zombie in the way. I can't peek. Yeah. Okay, we're going to leave them down there. There's really no reason for us to fight them when we don't have to. What that means is we can probably go check out the rear of this uh, building without any issues. Because they've apparently migrated into the basement. Here we have some corpses, Bruce corpse of a zombie, really nothing on it. Uh, I don't recognize this corpse. Survivor zombie, literally, so it's literally like the eighth survivor zombie we've seen. I have never seen them in such a high density before. I always see them in pairs. I've never seen so many survivor zombies in one location. It's very peculiar, but also... What are you going to do? I guess uh, people just decided to really dump them. We got some seeds here. Just dump them in that location. I really hate when people do that because I feel like you should, when you place a location, you should put a lot of thought into how you assign. Looks like we have a collapsed uh, basement here as well. This most likely leads into 
one of the basements here. Uh, we don't want to go in there. Uh, and here's another pit. It's a bit odd that there are so many pits. I think there's something broken going on with the map gen here that is leading to all these holes because I did not think you could actually collapse ground tiles. I, I, I admit I don't know how that works. But I think you should put a lot of thought into if you're going to manually spawn enemies. Oh, they're also dying on this feral runner. So these rose bushes are killing the enemies. Look at sunflower. That's nice. Um, so we're just going to keep looting, basically. I, I think it's a bit silly to just dump a bunch of enemies into... What I think happens is that people who contribute to Cataclysm don't always play Cataclysm. And so sometimes people make changes and they don't understand how game-breaking their changes are. Like, uh, if you've been watching the channel for any length of time, you know that I'm not a fan of the new uh, ballistic vests, the ESAPI, ESAPI vests, uh, because they have just incredible protection values. And like, we've talked about it pretty much at length on the channel at this point. It's not that there's anything innately wrong with them. It's just that by comparison to other items in the game, they're absurdly powerful. And it's like... If you were a person who played the game a lot, I think you would have recognized that this is like a really unbalanced item uh, and that you either needed to rework the armor value of other items to make them more balanced uh, and more sensible, or you should have lowered the value of the vest that you were making. And so I think that that's an indicator of the person who made them maybe doesn't play as much as someone like me who can easily look at that and say, this is too much, this was a mistake. Uh, and I'm not trying to insult that person. Obviously, they put some work into it, and I, I always hate when people really crap on other people's ideas and, and implementation and stuff. But that is one that really stands out to me as, I feel like if you played the game more, you would have known that this was maybe not the best way to do this. Um, again, not trying to crap on that person, just... Uh, is my opinions uh, so but yeah so again we're just gonna be looting for this episode so I don't have a lot of tutorial stuff to talk about oh boy uh, motorcycle armor motorcycle armor is unfortunately this is a poor fit so it's 30 encumbrance which is quite high it's a combination of cotton and Kevlar uh, which is not great because cotton has such low protection values but kevlar is quite good so even though this is only giving like one or whatever damage protection the kevlar makes up for that by a lot so at 30 encumbrance this is quite bad i believe um the difference between poor fit and fit is 10 encumbrance don't quote me on that it might be 15 it might be 8 i don't remember um, but it's significant, and we could drop this encumbrance pretty substantially, which is nice, because even the trench coat is a little... Oh, it's only nine. I thought it was more than that. Hmm. And it's very warm, is the main issue, I think. So this is very good protection for our torso, and it's great coverage, and it covers our arms as well. I just can't abide 30 encumbrance. It's too much. So unless we were able to refit this armor, we're not going to be wearing it. Although it's pretty great. If you find this and you have nothing else, I would highly recommend putting it on. Um, even though it's very encumbering. But because we have... Ooh, definitely take the battery out of that flashlight. Uh, because we already have the fur coat, it's not like we're in dire need of torso protection. So I'm not willing to give up 30 encumbrance on my torso just for is this a door closed screen door yeah but there's no wall oh it's a screen mesh wall interesting it's just blending in with the ground i guess because it's nighttime this is just a bathroom we don't need to go in there let's head back to base and drop our stuff off 30 encumbrance is quite a lot so if we look at our encumbrance it's currently 42 so if we remove nine for our fur coat it would be uh 33 and then if we replace that with the motorcycle armor, we would be at 63 encumbrance right now, which is enormous. That's a 63% chance of missing every attack. Let's grab this bike. Um, 
oh, it's a motorcycle and it doesn't have batteries in it. Ah, <sighs> great, great. So we can't even ride this. I thought it was a bicycle. So if we uh, try to start this, it doesn't have an engine. Oh, it doesn't even have an engine. I didn't even notice that. I saw it didn't have a battery and immediately rode it off. So we have not had great luck with our vehicles. This is a bicycle. Bicycle has no saddle, so we can't ride this. Um, for bikes, the, the priority of what you're looking for is a little bit different. We did talk about vehicles recently. Bicycle really only has a couple parts. Um, you have basically the wheels need to be intact, which again, we can look at down here. Uh, we have to have an engine, which on a bike is foot pedals, is the engine. Your body is the, it's a muscle powered engine. So foot pedals function as the engine. And anytime that you need to control a vehicle, you need to have a seat of some sort. So the saddle uh, here is broken, so we can't sit to pedal the bike. So everything else is intact. We could put a replacement on this, uh, especially because if we add up to this motorcycle, well, there's just a seat in the road. That's interesting. Uh, I don't know if you could put a seat on it or not. Yeah, I don't care about the zapper zombie. Uh, I want to go back and look at the motorcycle. Where was it? Here it is. We could just take the saddle off of this motorcycle uh, because it also has a saddle. What does it require? Bolt turning of two or more. We do have that. We have a, um, um, a wrench. We also have pliers, which I think pliers have bolt turning of one, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, and also we require mechanics one, which we don't have, but is very easy to grind your skill to. So we could just take the saddle off of that and put it on this bicycle, which would allow us to, to ride the bike. Now I mostly don't use bicycles in the game. I know a lot of people do because they're muscle powered engines. They don't require fuel or anything special. It's just pedals and, and some wheels. I find bikes a little bit flimsy and because they use our stamina, a lot of times when I get into an area where I want to engage the enemy, I need to park. In, it's hard to find a parking space that's far enough away from the zombies that you can recover your stamina and still escape if you had to. Like if we come across a horde and we suddenly have to start pedaling like mad because we came across a horde of ferals, we can run out of stamina pretty quickly. Um, biking is mostly not that stamina consuming, but it can be a point of concern. So that's not something I'm super interested in. I just don't like them. If I was going to use a bike, it would be a motorcycle just because it's so much easier to maintain high speeds and, and things like that. We have a lot of eggs that we really want to start eating because they'll go bad. Um, everything else can stay here. Did you hear that? It's just me, Lyle Darden. Don't worry. Still, uh, still don't want to be friends? Check opinion. Thinks you're harmless. Yeah, you think that now doesn't care about you yeah I'm not surprised no one cares about me uh, did it say trusting you don't trust me trusting trust three was it three before not yet would you like to travel with me still 27 percent you got it I'm with you awesome I don't know why he joined us all of a sudden he didn't want to before tell me about giving you orders NPC tutorial oh I don't think that that's good for right this second Let's, um, okay, guard this position. No, uh, find a horse and mount up. My God, there's so many options. Uh, I want to give you some commands for combat. Sure. Uh, he will move freely as needed. Follow you around at about two paces. We'll use ranged weapons. We'll use grenades. Avoid shooting if allies are in the line of fire. Freely move to attack enemy. Um, I I don't want don't use grenades anymore seems like a wise thing to tell him but never mind let's not do this right now miscellaneous rules will not pick up items will not bash down a, stay awake as long as possible well no sleep when you feel tired he will complain about wounds and needs smash nearby corpses not close doors will open doors to reach a destination follow normal engagement rules ah uh, okay never mind we'll we'll talk about this 
in a future episode because I have to learn how to use NPCs and we can learn that together. But for now, uh, let's... I mean, I don't have anything to give you right now. Just... How do I tell him to stay behind? I'd like to know a bit more. Any hints? Mind if we just chat for a bit? Let's just chit-chat. Tell me about giving you orders. I'm going to go my own way for a while. You really leaving? Uh, well, no. I don't want to leave and risk losing him as a possible companion. Just hold this position. No, that says hold on to this item. Guard this position. Will he still sleep and stuff? I, if, if I tell him to guard, is he just going to infinitely stand there? Or is he actually going to sleep? I'll ask on the Discord uh, in between episodes. For now, we're going to head back out because I'd like to loot one more building at least uh, in the next 10 minutes. Turn on safe mode, which will trigger at the zapper zombie, but it'll be fine. Head back up. No, head back up. I shouldn't hold down the button. My uh, video gets very choppy for some reason when I hold down the movement key. So we'll just tap. Just tap it in. A little taps. Okay. We're just going to hit some of these other houses. So we can mark these as explored. Actually, we didn't hit the third house, did we? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. So we'll mark that as explored as well. And we'll hit these to the north. Again, crossing the road is probably the most dangerous part because zombies tend to congregate in the road. This vehicle looks interesting. Looks like a uh, our APC, probably. A Humvee. Gotcha. Okay, so let's do our vehicle assessment. Does it have an engine? Yes, it does. It does not appear to be faulty. Does it have fuel for this engine? Well, yes, it does, which is great. Does it have battery charge enough to start the vehicle? It sure does. Uh, does it have wheels? Oh, no. No, it does not. Does it have controls? Yes. A seat? Yes. And no security system because it's a Humvee. Um, they're not really... I mean... I don't, do they have security systems in real life Humvees? I mean, I'd imagine if it were like a, uh, a Hummer, like a, a civilian version, it probably would. But this is clearly a military version. It comes with a, a mounted M240, which by the way, is 40 rounds of 7.62. So if we found a 7.62 rifle and we were looking for, for bullets, we, we could take apart that chain linkage for, um, for rounds. So this is a great vehicle. We're going to mark this. Um, Hum, Humvee, no, yeah, Humvee is fine. Tires. So we need tires, which are easily done. It's just finding a jack that can be difficult because we've already found um, a wrench. So if we go to the tires and we try to take them off, you'll see we need bolt turning two or more, which uh, again is satisfied by our wrench. And we need a tool with jacking of 12 or strength 550, uh, which means we would need to be strong enough to lift the vehicle, which is obscenely high. This is like 55 times higher than the average human. Uh, or a tool with jacking of 12. This is based on the weight of the vehicle. So because it weighs 12,000 pounds, we need a jacking of 12. Higher, heavier vehicles require higher jacking qualities. So the jack is pretty easy to make. We just don't have the book for it. And uh, we can probably find a jack in another vehicle somewhere. But a Humvee is a pretty good starter vehicle because it comes with armor. You'll see these have uh, military composite armor plating. Once we start doing vehicle work, we will talk much more in detail about the vehicle screen. But for now, we'll just mark that there's a vehicle here. We want to loot and get back to base before too much longer. Jean jacket, trench coat, also cotton, utility vest, no thank you. Another basement, basements can be very good. Ham radio is so awesome, is is good. It's nice to find a sewing book early on. That way you don't have to grind tailoring. Uh, go ahead and grab root beer. No. Uh, check the bedroom, I guess. There's a safe here. We don't have the means to pick the safe. Uh, you need a stethoscope in order to pick safes open. Uh, there was supposed to be a PR. There was supposed to be stuff added to Cataclysm that would... Uh, add safe cracking tools to the game that never actually came about so unfortunately you need the stethoscope which can be a little bit difficult to find they're an item that people do tend to look for and struggle to find 
Motorcycle boots we'll take because they have Kevlar, and if we uh, ever need Kevlar plates, it's nice to have a the ability to pick those up, to deconstruct for those. Take the compression top, I guess. And just want to do a quick loot here and get out of here. Oh, bacon. More bird eggs. Uh, you know, they really upped the spawn of bird eggs, which makes sense because pretty much every American household has some, some eggs in the fridge. But uh, I don't love... I don't love bird eggs in this game. They're not very calorie dense. Uh, I mean, I guess technically for their volume, they're very calorie dense. Eggs in general have a high calorie count considering how small they actually are. Um... But it's not significant, I think, in real life. An egg has something like 90 calories. I don't know if that's true, now that I said it out loud. Let's grab all this stuff. We'll check the basement. What do you got in the basement? We see a cockroach nymph. So if we look here, we have a giant cockroach nymph. It's a baby mutant cockroach about the size of a rat. Um, giant animals give mutant meat... What is this basement? Oh, this is, uh, I don't think I've seen this basement before. Let's uh, shift to running, of course. Step back. There's a cockroach down here. Hmm, let's run. Are you guys fighting? I thought zombies would fight with roaches. Roaches are a little difficult to hit. I would like to kill the zombie, I think, is the much bigger threat here. There we go. Now we can just bump attack the roach. Um, so, I don't know if we talked about mutant meat or not. Did we ever talk about mutant meat? I really don't want to. Uh, so, mutant meat, anything that is abnormally large. Let's get our stamina back. Heard footsteps? Nah. There we go. Spotted the swimmer. We were going to wait until we saw something. So we'll go ahead and deal with the swimmer. Let's run again. Even though our stamina is getting a little low here, we don't really want... Okay, please don't be two diagonal tiles away. Okay. Not hitting things very well. Turn off our run. Wait a few moments. Heard footsteps? No. Zombie spotted? Stop? Yes. We did manage to recover most of our stamina. So we'll go back to running. Sounds like there may be an additional enemy, which is a little bit concerning, but with the spear, I'm not super worried about it. Smash these guys, see if we can get our stamina back again. Okay, check the corpses. Really nothing. Um, see, here's the thing. I, I feel like I should make... Oh, there's quite a few in there, it looks like. I thought I saw two in there. I guess we'll finish clearing the basement. I guess we should make a separate video for talking about mutant meat. The problem is it's not going to be a very long video. So I really hate making like 10 minute videos. I prefer everything to be about a half an hour long. But because of the tutorial series, I've really wanted to make everything its own independent video. That way when people search for a particular thing, they can find the, the video nice and easy. There is quite a lot of zombies down here. Um... Our fork spear is on its way out also, which is concerning. Uh, you'll see it's about half damaged. So it's only dealing 17 damage, which is still quite high. It's just if it breaks in the middle of combat, we may not be able to disengage and wield a different weapon. I think it'll be fine. Let's back up and just fight things as they come. Oh, you're, an anim you're a zombie. We want to avoid staying in melee with the zombies because the zombies can bite us the roaches are not really concerning because the roach is just going to do a little bit of damage to us we are running out of stamina which is starting to worry me i feel like at this point we should stop running uh i don't want to get caught up with no stamina so we'll just bump attack what we can here <sighs> meat jerky Oh, Mossberg 500 is a uh, shotgun. Shotguns are pretty powerful and pretty good. Why is its name in red? I don't know why its name's in red like that. In pink, rather. Let's get our stamina back. You can see how during this basement fight, we fought, what, six or seven, seven zombies? 
you'll see how each little encounter with one or two zombies has mostly drained our stamina. And if we were not backing off to rest, we would have run out of stamina in the middle of our fight. And we would have been in very, very dangerous predicament because running out of stamina is essentially a death sentence in combat. So you, you can probably begin to understand the significance of taking a breather, backing up and saying, okay, I'm going to engage a little bit more cautiously. There's a crawling zombie. He is not concerning. Uh, we will just murder that guy very quickly. Anything on you? A vibrator? Sure, we'll take it. I think we have one, but they're a pretty good tool. Birdhouse Monthly. Okay, and then there's a door to the south, and we're hearing noise in there, so there's very likely more enemies. We're at 30 minutes. Let's, let's clear just cockroaches. We'll clear the cockroaches. Okay, there's quite a few of them. Uh... Yeah, let's finish fighting them. We're just going to stand here and tank them. And if we run out of stamina, we will run... Okay, well now there's a zombie. Let's back out of here. Um, oh, you actually followed me upstairs. Good for you. Most uh, enemies don't follow upstairs like that very easily. And there's another one. We're running out of stamina. You can hear our heartbeat is getting faster. We're going to back off. And we're going to rest to get our stamina back. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, we hear the... Uh, car alarm let's wield our nail bat because it has a better to hit and we're really missing these enemies a lot and we would rather like guarantee a hit so it looks like cockroaches will follow you upstairs pretty free freely let's go down deal with the zombie i don't know where the zombie is we're gonna go to the forked spear for dealing with the zombie she's backed off into here uh run please because we're in pain and remember, pain slows our speed, so we really need to be running. It's another freaking roach. They're a little annoying. They do tend to spawn in very high, uh, large numbers of packs. Uh, or rather, packs of large numbers is how you would say that if you spoke English as a native language instead of sounding like a dummy. Once again, we need to stop running, so we're going to turn off running and just bump attack the roach. You'll see they're hitting us quite a lot. How's my uh, armor doing? We are taking some damage to our equipment, which is concerning. I think we've largely cleared this out at this point. Get our stamina back. Check for any... Yeah, there's still a few stragglers. Quite a lot of enemies in this basement. And the fact that there are roaches makes me think there's probably a pantry down here. People who spawn the roaches generally do so in kitchen locations. Let's get our stamina back. And we'll just check. Uh, headless zombies, not really a concern. Some roach litter. Not seeing anything in the cabinets. Don't really understand why there are roaches down here if there's no food. Looks like just tool stuff. Uh, yeah, don't don't melee with the zombies. Back off and use the spear. That's why we made the spear. Uh, I'm just so used to, in my casual playthroughs, I don't use spears anymore because they're a little OP. So I'm still used to just bump attacking everything. Okay, so we've cleared everything out. Uh, in the next episode, I think we will talk about butchering, the value of butchering something like a roach, the concept of mutant meat, um, and, and how that works. It's probably going to be a short episode because there's not much to talk about, but I'd rather make a 10-minute episode that's easily searchable and findable on the internet than to make a, a long episode that contains so much stuff that I don't know what to call the episode. Like you probably noticed in this series, I have quite a few episodes that are just called like general gameplay in the thumbnail. And that's because it covers lots of little stuff or is just general gameplay. And that's not very helpful when you're trying to make tutorials that people can quickly find something that they're looking for. So I try to avoid that. So we'll probably have a really short episode, but it is what it is. So for now, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode. I'll be back with more Cataclysm tutorial content in the near future, and I'll see you next time.